everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and we're obviously back in the garden with the onions. So remember how we transplanted all these onions in the container? Well, they're ready to go. You can see that I've kept them nice and short. That really helps to keep them strong so they're not, you know, hanging everywhere. If they are, you know, much taller than mine, give them a good trim before you transplant. Just makes it a lot easier to handle. They're not flopping over everywhere. So I'm on my fourth set of leaves and you can see the thicker ones and the thinner ones um, coming. So now it's a big deal to get all these transplanted at least because there's at least 200 onions to go in to this row. Now you'll see behind me Attica, give them a wave. Wave, you see them behind? She's already starting to plant her section of onions in. And we're going to start planting this row. This row here is 35 feet long by about two, half, two and a half feet wide. So the very first thing what we need to do is um, prepare our bed. Okay, so to prepare a bed is pretty simple. We have our raised beds and what I want to do is just make sure the dirt is nice and even um, towards my edge. I always make a ridge so the water just doesn't run down. But very simple here, just making it flat on top so when it rains these beds stay moist. The next thing what I want to do here is grab my onions. Now they're nicely in the pot. Um, I'm going to just loosen up each side here. Sometimes they can pop out real nice. Other times, well, they just simply don't. Onions don't have a big root system. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to just tuck my hand underneath here, just like so, and just kind of loosen them up a little bit. And that way they're kind of floppy like that and I'm just going to use my hand in this case as shovels. Onions do really well with transplanting so at this particular stage you don't have to be too scared to shock them. Now they don't have crazy roots. You would think they would have these huge roots but they don't. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to plant it in the corner and I am only planting up to where the leaves start. So I'm going to bury all of this in because this is where the beautiful bulb is going to be made. I'm just going to dig my hole here, plop in my onion and then press it down. Now remember we're going to be covering this onion roll with the white fabric so it's going to be really important that we leave enough space here for rocks to hold our, our fabric down. The next one I am doing like five inches apart. You can cram a lot of onions into a small space. I'm doing this with my hands because I find the holes to be so little that shovels and all that for my personally is just a little more cumbersome. So in this particular side of the row it's a little narrower actually this row is actually two and a half feet at the other end but this end got a little bit narrow that's okay but basically I got four here across then I'm going to move up and once again just continue pulling out of my container and plopping in my beautiful onions just like that. So where I'm going to do this all the way down and uh, Annika how are you doing? Good. You're doing awesome and I'm just going to continue planting in these beautiful onions.
Okay, take a look at that row and you can see how long it is. Um, teamwork at its finest. We got all of them planted. So now one of the most important things to do after transplanting is watering. So what you want to do whenever you're watering new transplants is water them gently. We like using these water watering cans and just go over it and drench them. They need lots and lots of water. So in this case, don't hold back. So the next step after watering is to set up the fabric. Now we have done two of the tunnels over here. Um, they have cabbage, Brussels sprouts and broccoli underneath and you can see here that this first row right here it actually has kale and broccoli and it's a bit under shock that's why we just did that one as well today but it will get out of shock but the thing is, is that the white butterflies or the cabbage moths love them and the reason why we're covering the onions is because onions are susceptible to maggots and that's really bad in our area so if we don't cover it all this hard work and planting onions it goes down the drain so we're going to show you how we're going to set up these tunnels um, it, there's a little bit of wind today. This isn't ideal. It kind of comes in spurts So if we're kind of trying to keep our fabric down, that's exactly why but it's also supposed to rain tonight So we either deal with the wind or we deal with the muck and I will choose the wind so Watch us as we set up the hoops. The hoops are literally just a heavier gauge of metal. Um, we're simply sticking them into the ground and I am using uh, two inch binder clips at the very top. You can see that black mark there. Um, that works really good. In this case, we are going to use clothespins as I ran out. We'll be picking up some more of those and exchanging them tomorrow. So for right now, you make do with what you got and let's get these tunneled. So as you can see here, we hooped both rows and there is 11 of them in each row. So that is our frame and now we are going to bring in the fabric. Okay, so now with the tunnels, we're about to add the rocks. Now how we have it is that in the middle, we have the rocks for both sides that open. So this side here will open this way and this one will open this way. That's why they're lighter rocks. On the other side, we have rocks that will always be here and not moved. We also have rocks at the very ends of our rows to secure the fabric. And same with this side. So these two, for example, um, they have pretty heavy rocks in the middle because this side will never ever open. So we that way it eliminates so many rocks. Um, and that way when we're opening one side up, we open two tunnels up at the same time for maintenance and watering. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So ocean, is going to come and bring some bigger rocks and we are going to secure 
right now this side down as you can see there's no rocks and this is the last tunnel so as she puts them on we need to make sure that the fabric is taut and and but has enough give and we just put a pretty good size rocks down now we've collected these rocks from all over um, our property and also a farmer had a huge rock pile that's close by so we've just collected all sorts of rocks haven't we ocean yes okay so we can do this about every second hoop so right where your foot is there ocean definitely put another one as you can see we're putting it right on I want to put that down because that one's kind of tilting ocean there you go you want to put it right on that fabric and if you're nice with this fabric you can definitely walk on it we'll probably add one here oh should we need another one in between the gap is a little too big so we can put a little bit of a smaller one in the middle but the key thing is is to get make sure this fabric it does not fly out what we found ocean what I want you to do is put a rock that's wrong so I want you to not put it right on top but kind of lift up the fabric and angle it and because because we found out that if you go like this ocean no up a little bit yep just like that if you go like that with a rock what happens is the wind actually pulls it out from the rock and that's why it's so important to put your fabric right on the ground and put that rock directly on it um, there's more surface area and the fabric isn't going to go anywhere so we're going to continue that all the way down until this side is secured okay so there you have it this side is definitely secured so now we need to add in the um, clothes pins just it just holds that fabric down on those hoops a little bit better I prefer the binder clips a little bit better but like I said we kind of ran out and the city is an hour away but my husband is making a trip tomorrow in, into into the city so we'll pick up they just have more surface area and they don't um, snap off as easy as clothes hangers do so but for for today it'll just have to do so we do that all the way down you got to make sure that that metal piece ocean like that one there goes right in it otherwise they will snap off like it just did without ripping the fabric that's the thing do you have enough Okay, put that one at the end. Oh, you have one extra? Yeah. Okay. Let's pick up that one there. Awesome, that looks really good, Ocean. So now that we have that step completed, the last thing we need to do is to get the rocks exactly where you're standing, isn't it? Because that's the side that when we open one, we open two. Right? Yeah. So we have some more rocks here as our collection. And so what we're gonna do, what Ocean's gonna do, is literally go down this line and you're gonna rock for both sides at the same time so we gotta watch our tension make sure things are as I mean reasonably tight right and and get this right finished awesome so she's gonna go all the way down here and and put the rocks there ocean will with the wind here we'll have to do it a little bit closer but she's going to put down the first set and then we'll fill in the gaps after so there we have it everything's covered now it's just a matter of keeping it watered 
keep things weeded and let it grow. So I will see you later on in the growing season for an update on how they are doing. Otherwise, otherwise happy planting and I'll see you on the next video.